welcome to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapman. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I am your host, David Tatman. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we're going to talk about what happened during week nine of the 2024 regular session of the Louisiana legislature and what to expect in week 10. We are in the home stretch of the 2024 regular session. The committee uh, meeting schedule uh, was pretty heavy last week and is expected to be heavy for really the next two weeks as we again head into this home stretch. One thing that is certain is that the House and the Senate floor calendars are packed. Uh, They have a lot of work to do to clear their floor calendars and will be there today and every day to uh, watch what's going on and to let you know what we know. Um, expect a bunch of late nights and perhaps some, perhaps even weekend work in the final three weeks of the legislative session. So, so what are the things that are going on? So we're still talking constitutional convention, CC 24, the bill everyone seems to be watching and waiting on uh, is the proposed constitutional convention. HB 800 by Representative Bo Boye has now passed the House of Representatives. It passed with 75 votes, seven more than the two-thirds needed uh, to pass the bill. The bill now heads to the Senate and Governmental Affairs Committee for its next stop. So there's been quite a few amendments The bill as it currently stands, the Constitutional Convention would begin no earlier than May 20th, 2024, and at least three days after the Speaker of the House issues a proclamation setting the time and date of convening. There continue to be uh, outlined 171 delegates, that's 105 House members, Uh, 39 senators, and 27 gubernatorial appointees. It requires that the submission of the proposed Constitution be not later than August 15th, 2024. That proposal will be included on the fall elections ballot for consideration by a public vote during the presidential election. Quick reminder, the amendments have changed the bill a good bit. Articles 1 through 4 of the Constitution would not be included in the Constitutional Convention. The MFP, retirement, and homestead exemption are now off the table, and the timeline has changed, as I mentioned earlier. Continues to be a tricameral format with the House, the Senate, and the gubernatorial appointees operating as distinct and separate entities and they would not have any uh, provisions to provide for private funding. HB 800 could be debated as soon as this week. Keep in mind that there has always been concerns that the bill may have trouble in the Senate. The Senate President Cameron Henry has not been affirmative in his support for a constitutional convention or this bill in particular. Other senators have expressed their lack of enthusiasm about doing a constitutional convention now after two special sessions and a very long and, and, and in-depth regular session. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We're going to know soon. Let's talk about a couple of other things that are being discussed. Boards and commissions. The Senate has watered down a bill backed by Governor Jeff Landry that would have broadened the governor's authority relative to the appointments to boards in Louisiana. Senate Bill 462 by Senator Valerie Hodges of Denham Springs, as originally filed, would have given Governor Landry broader a power, broader power to make appointments to boards. It would have also allowed him to decide who serves as the chair of each of those entities. This is usually done by a vote of that board or a nominating process, depending on how they're set up. The bill, as amended, would remove the and exclude the state's four higher education boards from the bill with regard to appointing who the leader of that 
board would be. Retirement and pension boards were also excluded in, in amendments on the floor. Landry has expressed his desire to enact his political policy priorities quickly. The bill did pass the Senate by a vote of 28 to 10. The bill now heads to the House Governmental Affairs Committee. Keep in mind, there are a few other bills that are in the process that do similar things, not exactly the same thing, but that deal with boards and commissions, appointments, and leadership. So we'll know very soon about how all of this will end up. So let's Move over to insurance, which we've been talking about all session. I've got some good news and bad news. The good news is the package of bills designated to impact property insurance rates has passed the legislature and been signed by the governor. That's Tim Temple's package that was put together to try to bring some relief to the property insurance markets and property insurance rates in Louisiana. What's the bad news? There's no help on the way to lower auto insurance rates. There are a few bills that are still floating around, but it is unlikely that anything significant will pass. So for auto insurance rates, expect your rates to continue to rise and to be high. Let's switch over to elections. The Louisiana congressional elections that are scheduled for this fall, not very far away, A three-judge panel in Shreveport threw out the congressional maps that were passed in the first special session of 2024. That map created a new majority-minority district in Louisiana, or a new black district. The federal court ruled that the maps were developed basically and primarily on race, and this would be a violation of the Voting Rights Act. Louisiana Attorney General Liz Murrell asked the U.S. Supreme Court to suspend the judicial panel's order that rejected those maps that were drawn. If that does not happen, the state will be forced to use the maps it used in the last election. And remember, that would be pretty old maps. It would be the 2022 maps. That map is only one majority minority congressional district, and that district is currently held by Troy Carter of New Orleans. Keep an eye on this. There are deadlines from the Secretary of State that have to be met in order to do what needs to be done to get the districts organized for the fall election. Secretary of State Nancy Landry has set a deadline of May 15th in order to be able to have that election. Otherwise, they will use the maps that are currently in the system. So let's move on over to public records. We've talked a little bit about this bill in the past, but we've got some new uh, players in it. Former Governor John Bell Edwards has weighed in on Senate Bill 482 by Senator Cloud that provides four public records. The press, as you know, are apoplectic over this bill. If you read the articles or watch the news channels, they are going crazy over this issue. John Bell Edwards has weighed in. He doesn't like it, doesn't think it should be that way. It's kind of interesting to hear a former governor get involved that quick in a new governor's politics. So as I mentioned in a public uh, 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 about public records in a previous episodes, public records request can sometimes be used to harass elected and appointed officials. And in doing so, it doesn't cost the appointed or elected officials anything. It costs the taxpayers of Louisiana millions of dollars at state and local levels. I'm all for public access to information, but the truth is you can get most of the information you need online if you want it. You can also get it subpoenaed if you want it. You can also ask an elected official to get it for you. In my time as a public official, it was weaponized. It was used against me in a way that was designed to harass or intimidate me. So keep an eye on this. That's the primary reason why I think you're seeing this bill. Don't know if it'll pass, but I do uh, want to watch it because it, it, it definitely will, it will in, 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 uh, bring a very uh, significant change in the public records law that will kind of set the tone for how things will be moving forward. So let's talk about synthetic nicotine. We've talked about vapor. We talked a little bit about this, but synthetic nicotine nicotine has become a pretty big fight in this session. So what is synthetic nicotine? Sounds 
eerie. I should have some background music for that. It is nicotine that is not derived from tobacco. It's created in labs. It's used in vapor products, but more recently and more predominantly, it's used in pouches that are usually labeled by their strength. So products like On, Juiced, Velo, and others uh, have packaging that would say one milligram or three milligrams or eight milligrams. And to give you a little bit of, of a relative consideration, when you smoke a cigarette, a single cigarette, you get about, about a gram and a half of nicotine impact. Some of these products are at 8 grams, so it would be like smoking three cigarettes all at once. Maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. I do know that the FDA, has ban- the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, has banned these products. However, in Louisiana, we're, po- we're poised to pass a bill by Representative Bo Boye to make them legal. House Bill 970 would do just that. So keep an eye on it. This bill will be likely in committee this week. And we'll see if it's going to squeeze out a committee and uh, head to the floor. A couple of other things I want to talk about. One is money. Louisiana's income projections will give the legislature more money to spend over the next year, actually over the next two years. The Revenue Estimating Committee increased its projections for an additional $197 million for the 23-24 fiscal year and an additional $87 million in the 24-25 fiscal year. It's more money for the legislators to spend on priority projects or whatever else it is they want to spend. While the budget is still being considered, this will give the legislators direction on how much money they have to spend as they finalize the budget in the final days of the legislative session. Keep in mind, as we approach June 30th, 2025, that the 0.45 sales tax sunsets. That means that there will be about a half a billion dollar hole in revenues beginning in 26, 25, 26 fiscal year. So keep an eye on the money. Show me the money. Follow the money. Finally, in local politics, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the new city of St. George. The Louisiana Supreme Court has overturned several lower court rulings and voted 4-3 to three to allow the city of St. George to move forward. Metro Council member and leader Lamont Cole had filed a lawsuit to try to stop it. He was a plaintiff in that lawsuit. His only option moving forward is to ask for a rehearing. The, uh, he has indicated he will ask for that rehearing. If that rehearing is denied, the city of St. George will become official right away. If the Supreme Court decides to grant a rehearing, one or more of the justices who voted for allowing the city of St. George to move forward would have to flip. That is not likely to happen. So what do you need to know about the city of St. George? A couple of things. One is it's not named after St. George Church and School. It is fashioned after the St. George Fire Department, one of the top fire departments in the state and in the country, just FYI. What else do you need to know? The governor will have to appoint five council members, the initial uh, five council members and a mayor in order to work on the development and the organization of the city of St. George. Once the city of St. George gets up and running, it will be the eighth largest city in Louisiana or about the size of Kenner. And it's hard for me to say Kenner without saying bra. So Kenner bra, sorry. There is no school system currently in the city of St. George. The East Baton Rouge Parish School System operates within the city of St. George. In order to get their own independent school district, the legislature would need to pass a constitutional amendment with two-thirds vote in both bodies. There is no instrument to do it this year, so the first it could be first time it could be considered would be next year. The measure would then go to the voters and it would have to pass statewide, parish-wide and within the confines of the new school district, whatever that would look like. If any one of those three fail, then the school district fails. So it's a pretty big lift, a pretty big climb. 
The school district's boundaries also do not have to be contiguous with the new city of St. George. The whole process is likely to take about two to three years. So if a new school district does pass, it will not need new taxes because it will likely be the fourth richest school district in the state. So no new taxes for schools in the city of St. George, but perhaps for municipal services. We don't really know. But wanted to give you a little bit of an update on that. If you've been reading it, everyone is calling me and saying, well, when does our new school district happen with the city of St. George? And I have to let them know that it is a municipality, not a school district that would come later. So Again, that's our show for today. Uh, we appreciate those of you who have been listening and those of you who have been following us. Please like, follow, and share. Please go in. I'm going to beg you guys to go in and rate us on one of the podcasting platforms. You don't have to rate us high. Just, you know, I'm like an Uber driver. Give me a five. No tip expected. Um, if you would like to follow us on social media, our social media handle on all the major platforms is at Pelican Brief 225. If you would like to watch us on YouTube, you can at the Pelican Brief 225. And if you would like to go to our website and interact with us on any, in any way, our uh, website is www.pelicanbriefpodcast.com. Again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of our audience. And until next time, we are the Pelican Brief. The Pelican Brief is an off script production.